Welcome to this video. I wanted to do a video where I interview other YouTubers and I actually got an interview with a YouTuber called Charlie Chang and he is a YouTuber. He's got a lot of subscribers. He's a big name YouTuber. He's he does really, really well with property and Amazon FBA and YouTube and entrepreneurship in general. And I just thought it would be so valuable, such good, such good quality information for you guys to hear from someone like Charlie, who is just who's doing really, really well, and he's he's got really insightful thoughts. So I know this video is a bit long; it's something like I don't know a half an hour video, but it's a really, really cool interview. And if you want the timestamps for all the questions, they'll be below. But all I'll say is watch this through and enjoy it because it's a really, really insightful interview and it might actually give you some ideas that you probably didn't think of before. So enjoy the video and if you never heard of Charlie before, his link is in the description. So go check his channel out. But after you've seen this video and as normal, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you know when I bring out new videos and leave a comment down below if you like this kind of videos if you want me to interview more people and who you want me to interview tell us a bit about yourself your background you said you're 28 yeah i'm 28 so like a bit about your background you did university that kind of stuff because you had like a, of a normal a normal upbringing kind of thing right yeah so well i'm so i'm 28 um i went to ucla and i was like nice. pre-med my, my parents wanted me to be a doctor okay. pretty much my whole life <laughs> and like them telling me that i feel like it made me think yeah, I should be a doctor. Um, yeah, I was good. I was good at science, um, but I, I, when I see blood needles, like it makes me want to faint. <laughs> um, but my my personality wasn't strong enough, so I just kept doing pre med. Um, even applied to med school, didn't get in. Um, and now I am. I'm living in Orange County, California, and I run. I'd say at least a few businesses. Um, I do real estate. I do mortgages. I do e-commerce, uh, just started getting on YouTube. Um, I've done photography, modeling, yeah. video, like pretty much everything. Yeah, and that's pretty another much. thing that brought me, that, yeah, that's another thing that, that drew me into doing this interview is like, I feel like I've done a bit of everything. Yeah. Like, I can't think of something I haven't tried. Um, so yeah, and I, I just saw like you've literally put yourself in every single area, which is really interesting. I mean, yeah. and that and that leads us on to. Um, I want to talk about streams of income because I know you're big on multiple streams of income, and yeah. like we both have financial channels, so I thought this made sense. But um, if you had to say three of your, because you've got quite a few, but if you had to say three of your, not biggest, but like not 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 just biggest, but like funnest and most enjoyable and like best source of income, yeah. which would you recommend? Okay, so I think real estate is like my bread and butter. That's like my a main day to day sort right. of job thing. Buying so I've, I've, real estate or like being like a broker or? So I'm a broker and I have my own brokerage that I started late last year. Um, so we have eight agents right now. Um, nice. But I also, I help people buy and sell real estate. Um, so I'd say that was my, that's my, my big one, my physical like location, like day job. Right. Um, I think, I think YouTube is, taking over as like one of my biggest income sources. Really? And it's probably the one that's the most fun and I guess non-traditional. Right. Um, yeah, this, and that started in April. I got monetized very beginning of April, I think. Um, this year? This year, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, I've actually had my channel, I had my channel since like 2006 or something, and it used to be a music channel. So I was monetized for a little bit like, at least, I don't know, 15 years ago, yeah. I stopped doing that and I got demonetized. And then back in April, that's when I hit that again. Right, so you had to the new rules. What was it like 4,000 minutes or 1,000 subscribers? 4,000 hours of watch. Oh, that's it. Um, and then 1,000 subs. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Cause like, uh, yeah, I, I think the same, right? Everyone's like all these businesses you do. I'm just like, my funniest business has got to be YouTube. But it's the most amount, the way I put it is it's the most amount of work mm -hmm. for um, the least amount of like pay yeah. and it takes the most amount of time, but it's the most amount of enjoyment. It's just, it's yeah. such an odd one. Uh, yeah. I think for anyone that's starting YouTube, it's definitely below minimum wage at the beginning. Like, like yes. you don't get paid anything. Right. <laughs> um, but then like, 
I think as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, that's when it starts to pay off and it starts to become more passive since right. you have that big backlog of videos that is always on YouTube and people are watching these older videos, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. So I said real estate, YouTube. YouTube and with YouTube comes like the affiliate marketing and sponsorships and stuff. It's all stuff I had like no idea about before, but right. it's like mm -hmm. such a, it's such a real business and income source. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then third one, uh, third one is Amazon FBA. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I would say I'm very similar, but so do you don't do any kind of digital courses or anything like that? Do you? I don't do that right now, but I am. Um, yeah. I'm going to get into that. But just going back to YouTube, cause what I was going to, so where I was going with this is these, these top three source of income, right? I want to kind of pinpoint which is the best for a newcomer because I don't know so much about your channel, but a lot of my subscribers and viewers are very either not young, but like very new to business and telling them, you know, go into property is kind yeah. of like, what? That's like, I, I can't swim. Why are you throwing me into the deep end? Yeah. Um, so that's what I always tell them, you know, YouTube affiliate marketing, um, sometimes like drop shipping, print on demand, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so you're quite big with the YouTube thing now. So, I mean, for a channel that has what, like 115, 120,000 subscribers now, mm -hmm. what are you looking at in terms of ad, just ad, not, not um, affiliate marketing or anything like that, just what YouTube is paying you for, you know, having ads. Is that more than an actual, you know, minimum wage income now? Yeah. Um, I'd say you get about, Ten thousand dollars per month on ads. Wow. On ads. Okay, that's huge. Uh, May it was like fifteen thousand, but now it's it seems to be around wow. like ten or eleven thousand. That's mad. Yeah, I know. I, that's insane. That's six figure income, right? Um, that's six figure income from being like a YouTuber as well. It's like it's telling anyone you were a YouTuber ten years ago and they would spit on you. Yeah. And now it's just like I'm earning a I'm earning the same as like a lawyer, right? But yeah. on YouTube, it's crazy. I, I, I just hit 2,000 okay. literally two days ago, yeah. um, which I think for my audience size is not bad in terms of ad revenue. Yeah. Um, but that is goals. <laughs> You'll get there soon, dude. You'll get there soon. That um, is I, I've been talking to a lot of YouTubers recently, um, like making friends with other YouTubers. And dude, they make a lot of money. Yeah. Like, they make so like even if they don't make money on ads, like I have friends that do like prank channels and stuff like that. Um, they do maybe brand deals, sponsorships and like anything bringing yeah. at least $2,000. So it's like, well, I, I mean, I make, I make almost as much, um, from affiliate marketing yeah. through YouTube than my actual YouTube ad revenue, because just having links in the description. And again, like I always, I tell everyone like, you know, if you, if you get this, I'll get a percentage, you get something like, I'm always trying to be as honest as possible with it, yeah. but people like that. And um, like that also sees quite a lot. That's, that's also over a thousand um, yeah. every single month just from that. Dude, yeah, a channel, a YouTube channel, it's like, it's like part of your personal brand, right? It allows you to have so many new opportunities for business, like mm. affiliate marketing, you can make your own course, you can sell merch if you want, yeah. um, coaching, like, possibilities are endless do you so think, I think kind of, do you think because you've had you've got obviously a real estate mind do you yeah. think it's kind of like digital real estate making videos making money from these videos obviously it's not a, not not the same level but you're kind of like building a digital library that is earning you money in a way yeah it is it's like kind of free to do yeah it is i mean just need you can literally make videos with a iphone right you don't need a yeah. mic you don't you need a computer but you probably have one and yeah. it's like one of those businesses that anyone, anyone can start. And dude, I am terrible, like speaking on camera. I hated it. And really? that's, that's part of, that's actually part of the reason why I got into it because I was like, what can I do to get out of my comfort zone? And it was, yeah, I was thinking about doing YouTube or also I'm um, doing um, Toastmasters. Um, I just, Toastmasters is like a club where you do public speaking. Interesting. So if you, yeah, I don't know if it's in London, but in the US, it's like free clubs everywhere. Well, just so to get better at talking publicly and stuff. Yeah, you do, you do like impromptu speeches and. Oh yeah, we have that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> um, so that's so like anyone that's starting out um, on YouTube, you're gonna. It is such a good thing to do. I think it's it's building your personal brand. You're gonna get out of your comfort zone. You're gonna get better at talking to people. Um, it's gonna help you with any other business you start in the future. What if someone like some, what to say? Like, what if someone says it's all nice and everything? You can do a YouTube channel because you've got these business business mind, business everything. So what if someone's like, I don't know what to talk about? Yeah. What would you tell that person? Yeah, I'm lucky because I enjoy talking about like personal finance and entrepreneurship and it yeah. happens to be like a, a trending niche, right? And growing yeah. niche. Um, if, you, if you don't like talking about that stuff, just think about your interests. Um, like you've got to have some interests that are more niche. Yeah, it, that's even I if it's like talking about your life, like I, I know people that just make videos, they're, they're content creators, they make videos about their life and the things that they do. Yeah. Like Kelly Wakasa, Elliot Choi, um, they make these like just day in the life videos, um, following people around, just the things that they do in life. And that, uh, that adds a lot of value, I think. Yeah, because I think it, it's the it's personality. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the content, it's the personality yeah. that, it, that determines how successful your YouTube channel is going to be. Yeah. You can talk about anything. If you've got a good personality, people will watch it. That's what I think. Yeah, I would totally, totally agree. So, so moving on a bit, um, still with YouTube, but so I saw that you, you started or do you still do daily videos? Because I did a 100-day YouTube challenge and it lasted about 200 and something days, but it was the hardest thing of my life. And I, I would never, never go back. <laughs> I made 200 something videos? Every like, day in a row, every... yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I made a video every day for about one month in April. Okay. And that was like the hardest thing ever. That was like a full-time job. Did you notice a big change when you did that? Yeah, well, that's when my, my channel really took off. Because at the beginning of April, I had like maybe 2,000 subscribers. Right. And then by the end of that month, I don't remember how many I had, but at least 30 probably. Um, and, yeah, and then ever since then, it's just been growing. That's mind blowing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it's like, what was going on in your head when you just like, so, like, when you just see the numbers go from like two to 30, 50 to 100, like what is happening? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's weird to see all these views and likes and some comments because I had my channel for, I've been making the similar type of content since like 2018. Yeah. With very few likes, very few watches, all that stuff. But um, yeah, I wasn't very consistent back then. And that just shows how consistency is such a big, big factor, right? And getting your channel some traction. Um, the beginning is always the hard for any business. And so if, if you're starting out a channel and you don't see a lot of views at first, that's totally okay. Yeah. That, that's normal. Like if, if you get a lot of views at the start, that means you're really lucky or you're just like amazing, um, which most of the population won't b yeah. um I'm, i certainly am not so yeah i just i just stuck with it did it for 30 days i make a video maybe two times a week now okay nice so yeah, yeah. i same. i do sunday tuesday thursday stick to like a three three times a week schedule literally yeah. i have it on my thumbnail people are, like it's clear and uh yeah i mean it's working oh yeah your channel is doing really well um and but 200 that's that's insane yeah Whenever I think I'm working hard, like doing a video a day for 30 days, someone like you comes up and <laughs> tells me what's up. Well, the and worst part about it, the worst part about it is, I, I mean, I've been doing YouTube now for four years, literally yeah. four years, like last month. And I, in April, same kind of same kind of thing. I was at 6,000 subscribers. And in that four years, I got 6,000 subscribers. And that is the period of time I did hundreds and hundreds of videos. And then yeah. come April and I go to my three videos a week and my YouTube channel blows up. I'm just thinking yeah. all of that time, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, a, lot a lot of, of it is luck. A lot of it is just like, oh, yeah. one, world, whatever they're thinking. The tipping point is like the lucky point, like where you start to get really fast growth. Yeah. But if you had, if you had just stopped making videos after that 200 video streak, then you wouldn't have seen that growth. Right. No, of course not. I, yeah. And that's another thing I like saying, like, yeah, I get it's all luck, but it's also you kind of make your own luck. You've got to put in the work to get lucky. You can't just, you know, make a video and just leave it. The yeah. constant making the videos allowed one of them. I think one of my videos got really big and it's like 70,000 views now. And that's what kickstarted 
the whole blowing up of the channel. So that only ha that video only happened because I made all the previous videos. Mm -hmm. That's how yeah, I see that, it. getting that one video to blow up that that really I think helps a lot of channels yeah grow fast. Yeah, that, that was the advice I got when I was um, starting out my channel was you just need that one video to do really well. So that's why it's important to make quality content because if it's not quality, then it's probably not going to yeah blow up and do well, right? Moving forward onto your third third idea because your third source of income. Because again, I think for my audience, property is a bit too, is a bit too out there, but the YouTube and the FBA are definitely two very real businesses. So, I mean, talk to me a bit about FBA. Did you take a course? Did you like, how long have you been doing it? I've been doing FBA since I think 2016. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, there was just a, uh, one day I was like, I need to buy this product. Um, and I, I went on Amazon found it and I was like hey not too many people are selling it nice. and it seems like it'd be really cheap to make and I had heard about Amazon FBA before um, so then I was like I'm just gonna start that I didn't take a course I I watched YouTube videos there's so much good content on YouTube yeah, I sure. read some guides online like articles and then I just went for it and I, I think that's I start a lot of my businesses that way I don't really do my full due diligence or because mm -hmm. you know, I feel like I get analysis paralysis. I just, there's too much information to learn. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. So I mean, how many products you have going now? Obviously you don't tell us your products, but like yeah. what you want. I close to 10. Nice. Yeah. But okay. only, only four or five of them sell well. Yeah. So same with us. We've got, yeah. we've got, I think it's like five now, but we kind of make all our money from two. Yeah. So, I think that's how it is. As long as you get one good yeah. product. No, it's you can make I mean, a lot. of the two, that one product is making more than triple of the other one. So, yeah, there's the one product that we started with is like our biggest heavy hitter, yeah. and then we slowly add more products when we kind of feel like we have to. But I mean, we started earning a certain amount, and it was like we got to 10,000 a month, then it went down a bit, but then we were kind of happy with how much we were earning to the point where we were like, I'd rather focus on other work and just let that grow rather mm -hmm. than keep adding products, keep growing that. Um, but I mean, are you still focused on Amazon or you kind of like push it to the side a bit and let it just be passive yeah. a bit? Right now I'm really busy with real estate loans and YouTube. Okay. So I, I haven't been like sourcing new products or trying to find new opportunities. I've just sort of been, um, letting it go by itself. Nice. That's what I love I'm, about it as well. I know it's, it's like, it's pretty cool. It's, yeah. it's cool to see the sales coming and you don't do anything. Amazon does you just got to order stock and then make sure everything's level. But then even then we have someone now who orders our stock for us. So it's literally like, you know, that's amazing. Where are we on the ranks kind of thing. Yeah. And people always, people always say like, is it too late to get an Amazon? I, I don't think it's too late. Um, it's harder than before, but dude, there's so many products out there. Yeah. So many random products. There's also have to be new something. ways to do it now than like when we were doing, when, when I also started 2016, 2015 and, when we started, the whole idea of, you know, keywords, long tail, short tail, ranking, all that kind of stuff, it was so different to now. Like now I'll happily go into a product that has a lot of competition. If I can find 20 or 30 keywords that don't have that much competition around the product. And I know I'll still do well in it. Maybe not as yeah. well as the top seller, but enough to add on an extra three grand a month to my, to my income. Dang. That's awesome. Yeah. Looking for like workarounds, right? Yeah. And there's so many workarounds now. Um, so that's really cool. So, so of your three, so Amazon, YouTube, it's so cool to see that. It's so cool to see that. Okay. Yeah. So moving forward, I do want to talk just a bit, not about trading so much, but I'm a, kind of into cryptocurrency. Yeah. Um, I don't know how into cryptocurrency you are, but I've been getting people asking me about cryptocurrency and I was like, I don't necessarily, I haven't researched into it. I kind of just bought and I asked my brother for advice because he's a trader and somehow I've just had stupid success with cryptocurrency. I think <laughs> I'm up like 450% and yeah, it's ridiculous. Cool. But like, yeah. have you ever dabbled in cryptocurrency or anything like that? Yeah, I've, I've gotten cryptocurrency. Um, I actually had a pretty big portfolio back in, when was the crash? Two, the crash in 2019. What, which crash? 2019 beginning oh, that of the year. crash the crypto yeah. crash <laughs> not the actual crash yeah <laughs> big one. 
Yeah, I, I, I really like crypto. I just... Well, when, it went up, when, when it went up to 15 and then back down. Yeah. It yeah. went to like $20,000. Yeah, 20. Sorry, you're right. You're right. I'm thinking pounds. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm on the risky side, so I like to do things that are a little riskier. Yeah. So I don't recommend everyone get into crypto, especially if you don't know what it is. Like, I, I have a somewhat fundamental understanding about crypto, right. but still, I, I'm not an expert in any way. Okay. Um, I just thought that there, it was cool that there was a new type of currency. I know it's not really backed by much, like value wise. Yeah, it's, um, not, it's, it's, it's risky. It's very risky for sure. sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, right now I just have the, the big coins. Right. Yeah. Same uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, Ethereum, yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But like I always tell people, only do it if you have you know throwaway money kind of thing so if you've got your expenses sorted for a year or so and you've still got leftover cash and you want to put it somewhere and it's a good time to buy then maybe buy but don't ever and then leave it for a long time don't ever just like rely on it you're going to buy you're going to sell next week and you're going to be a millionaire kind of thing yeah no, totally yeah um, no, that's the biggest thing there i would say yeah if you're doing crypto the safest way which still not that safe is the big coins okay like Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin, Litecoin, you know, Ethereum, all that stuff. Nice, fine. And then my last business question, and then I, I just want to ask one other, um, is my audience is very, very into print on demand, drop shipping, that kind of thing. Have you ever had any experience with that, dabbled with that at all? Yeah, um, I've done, I've tried drop shipping yeah. back when I was still testing everything out and just trying to do everything. I did not do well in drop shipping. Fair. I still think, <laughs> I still think it's like a viable business plan, but you know, like not everything I'm going to do is like, I'm not a genius. I'm, I'm not going to be successful in everything I do. So sure, yeah, for sure. I did not end up having a successful dropshipping store, but I've, I've dabbled in it. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so one thing I tell, I tell my audience all the time is I was like, dropshipping is great and print on demand is great, but in my mind, they're not evergreen you know, long, like long-term businesses. They're more like hitting a trend, making a bit of money, you know, selling some weird item on Facebook with a dropshipping store. And I'm past that. I'm, I mean, 18 year old me would think, yeah, let's do that. Make a bit of money. But now I'm just thinking yeah. Amazon FBA kind of thing. That's a long-term yeah. business property, yeah. long-term business, YouTube, long-term business. So that's, I, I, it's so hard to try and convince people, you know, because again, the, the entry barrier for, uh, for, for Amazon FBA is a couple of thousand, right? You've yeah. got to get in stock. And I mean, right, with print on demand, it's more time. It doesn't really cost anything. You just have to create a cool design, upload it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I always say if you're young and you've got years and years to waste, you know, print on demand, Shopify, dropshipping, that kind of thing, go for it. But yeah, I think, I think those are really smart to start off with because you're going to learn so much. Um, and when I say I, I tried drop shipping, I literally ran ads for maybe a few days and then I didn't see any traction. So I, I call it quits. So <laughs> I wouldn't say <laughs> yeah, okay, when you're doing that stuff, you have to like invest in it and you have to know that you're not going to make a profit probably for until yeah. you get your ads set. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, my main, my main um, drop shipping product was, um, I bought something on eBay. I dropped it from eBay to Shopify. So I found a really cheap product on eBay. I yeah. put it on Shopify for, I marked up the price, I think by like seven pounds, seven dollars. And then I advertised it on Facebook. And then that blew up to a point where I was like, I can't be bothered fulfilling every single order on eBay. And I was like, I'm calling quits with this. I'd rather just stick with my Amazon business. What I didn't think to do was order in bulk like I would with Amazon and do it. I don't know why I didn't think that. Or but... get a VA. Yeah, I know dropshippers that are super successful, and they they have like ten VAs working for them. That's mad. Yeah, it's, that's it's, mad. And I don't know how much they're paying them, but like your time is valuable. So whenever you're paying someone else overseas to do something, or maybe even like in your country, yeah, it's gonna free up time so you can focus on building other income streams or doing more, you know, like productive stuff. Yeah. So that leads perfectly onto the last kind of thing I wanted to discuss. And this was just time management. So I've seen from your videos, you, you seem to be really good with time management. Um, so to be honest, less for my audience and more for me, 
<laughs> what would you say about time management? Because I mean, I find myself like now it's 8 p.m. in the UK, yeah. right? And like I'm obviously still working. And after this call, I'll probably still be working till 10. And I just feel like, like I just went on holiday, right, to Scotland. And I just felt like I had my laptop with me. And whenever my laptop's near me, I kind of just gravitate towards it and just work. Yeah. Which is really bad for time management and just everything. So, yeah. Time, it, it, especially when you're doing a lot of stuff, um, like we are, we're, you know, handling multiple businesses and right. different incomes. It's, it's really important to have a way to stay productive. And what I tell people is time blocking is one of those things that will really affect your day. So what does that um, mean, time blocking? So the night before, I'll look at what things I want to do the next day, whether it be like spend three hours on YouTube or make, making a script or right? something like that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, in, my, in my calendar, I will block out time to do each thing. And when you do that, it's sort of like you're, the next day you're sort of playing a video game. You're like starting out with whatever time you wake up, let's say 6 a.m., you're like, okay, it's six. I need to, I need to do this, my morning routine. And then it's 6.30 and you're like, okay, I need to do an hour and a half of work on this particular thing. And then two hours on this thing and then break and you know, stuff like that. So it's, yeah. you're playing a game with yourself kind of where you're always, you have something to do. And I think when you do that, it's, you're, you're less reacting to things. You know, lots of stuff comes in all the time. Yeah, so you, you're not getting distracted as often then? Yeah, you don't get as distracted. Cause you, you really try and you're holding yourself accountable with that, with the map or sorry, the calendar. Right. Okay. So is that like your main thing? Cause for me, I use an app called notion. I don't know if you ever had a notion. Yeah. I've heard of notion. Yeah. I just, everything, my whole life is organized through notion. Um, that's, that's cool. Yeah. If, if people are, are wondering how to be more productive, time blocking is good. You can do it on a calendar. You can use notion, Asana, um, whatever to track your day and, make you focus on one thing at a time because if yeah, you're bouncing that's what around. I struggle with. Well, yeah. that? That's why I struggle with because like, I feel like I would focus on five things at once. Like I've got click funnels open. I've got a YouTube yeah. open. I've got comments open and I've also got like Amazon open. I'm just like doing everything. It's like nothing's actually getting done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Deep work is so much more productive than just bouncing around. Nice. Um, I'm not perfect at it. Like I'll still bounce around and stuff, but I try and hold myself accountable with, with a calendar. Nice. Okay. I like that. I like that. Yeah, the morning cool. routine is another really big one that I really suggest people try out. Get your, get your day started on a positive note. Yeah. And just gives you like that momentum, you know, like work out in the morning, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Into the day like that. Yeah. I like that. Whatever works for you. Like you don't have to work out in the morning. Um, you can, it's good, but I've also found success in working out, after an initial big block of like deep work in the morning and then you take your your active rest as working out right um, oh, you're resting but you're still doing something sort of productive i like that so like literally working like six to ten and then doing like 10 to 11 active rest active break which is kind of like you know going to the gym or whatever basketball whatever it is that's cool yeah because dude no one no one can like sit around and work for eight hours straight i know it's not in a corporate office no one works uh maybe like some people like but most but people still, they get distracted on the computers like they'll get distracted and also they're constantly interacting with other people meetings get, getting food getting up so yeah. even then it's not deep focus work true yeah so that's why i think it's super smart to time block morning routine all that stuff it's all right awesome all right, well, this was, this was amazingly insightful. Thank you so much for coming on. Again, if anyone is watching this, then his, the Charlie's links to his YouTube channel will be the first link in the description. Go and check out his channel. He's got some awesome content and yeah, you'll like it. It's another, it's yeah. another, another kind of way of taking on entrepreneurship, but it's, it's a really good vibe. It's really, really cool. Thanks, Jimmy. It was amazing being on your show. And, uh, Kids. really great interviewer <laughs> <laughs> actually i was yeah. i was nervous <laughs>
So that was the interview, guys. I, how how mad was that interview? I mean, if if you if you lasted this long, then I, I hope you really really enjoyed it. As I said, his link is down below if you want to go and check out his channel. He's got a really really cool channel. But as well as that, if you want me to make more videos like this, interviewing other YouTubers about their successes and and advice, then let me know in the comments down below if you have specific YouTubers you want me to try and interview. And, and yeah, I mean, I just, I hope you like this video. I found it so unbelievably insightful. I know we spoke a lot about YouTube and more about Amazon FBA and less about print on demand, but I think that's a good thing because Amazon FBA and YouTube are two very, very profitable businesses to get into. And I think you should get into them. Like I really, really, really think you should get into them. So like I said, I don't want to drag this out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you on Tuesday for Tuesday's video as I bring out videos on Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday.